So this is my variant Gorilla Drive in the silver. And I'm gonna concentrate this video on just repainting the helmet. So what you see here, the end result will be covered in another video. But the helmet itself, as it sees, you see it here, that's what this video is going to cover. So there's a lot of information in these 20 minutes. Let's get started with the repainting of this helmet that looks more like a take from the Planet of the Apes TV series. Not the movie that you've seen, the actual series from the 70s. After looking at a lot of the material from that era, uh, I noticed that these metal helmets, a lot of them had some leather work to it. And that's why I wanted to make this video to share with you how I made the leather look on this helmet. So right off the bat, starting with the helmet that's already been repainted in silver chrome, it's already been uh, covered in a clear coat. That's gonna help us apply our base coat for the leather. You can choose any color you want as a base. I went with a light brown and I added it in three coats to the portions where I believe are the leather texture that shows up on this helmet. Now remember, it is an acrylic paint. It will take you more than one coat to apply it. Once it's fully applied, make sure you blow dry it uh, so that it's fully dry so you can handle the piece. Uh, make sure it's also a matte finish paint. Now the reason you want a matte finish paint is simply because you want to be able to stain the paint. If it is a glossy, it's going to be more difficult. So you want to have your stain uh, water-based, uh, which is also acrylic, but you want more water than you want paint. You do not do not want to cover the paint that's underneath. Remember, you only want to stain it. So you can choose any color you want. I chose an orange brown. You can go with a red, a purple, uh, whatever it is that you want to use. It's gonna to be totally up to you. Now you wanna wipe off the excess because you want only to remain uh, with a stained look. If you do not wipe it off, it's gonna be stained, but the colors are gonna to be too dominant. You're not gonna be able to see the base color. Once you've done uh, that portion of it, just go back through and uh, verify what spots you may have missed and then just go back in and touch them up. Now you can also add the same technique to the inside, but only add it to the portions that are gonna be visible. The inside of the actual helmet, don't even go there because eventually by removing and attaching the helmet and time after time, you're gonna wear off some of that paint onto the head of the figure and you're gonna end up staining the figure. So uh, just avoid that part of it. Now, once it's fully uh, stained and it's dry, you use the blow dryer to um, bring it to a dry finish, then you can go back in and clear coat your work to make sure that it does not rub off as you are handling the helmet. So our next step, we've made it here now to the dry brush highlights. So we're gonna mix our own color. We don't have to buy a dozen different colors to work on these figures. Use what you've got, mix your colors to get the color that you want to have shown on your figure. In this case, I'm using the same base color brown, the light brown, and I'm adding white. And again, this is a craft paint. This is not anything expensive. Well, the craft paints work just fine for a lot of this detail work. Um, so for a buck fifty a bottle, you can go a long way on painting these figures. Now watch what it does. It just picks up the texture. Dry brushing is only picking up enough paint onto the brush and then applying it to the texture only. You want to go against the grain, against the texture, thereby only picking up the raised areas on the surface. The rest of the actual surface stays dark because of the base color we applied. Now, the camera, which is my cell phone camera, doesn't truly pick up the colors that I'm actually seeing. I'll show a few images with a different camera 
as to the colors that I truly am visualizing or viewing myself. Now, this is all gonna depend on your desired look. If you want stronger highlights or left, or I should say less subdued highlights, then you can do that uh, to what you want to see. In this case, we want to show them um, so that the camera can actually pick them up. And of course, you can apply those same highlights to the inside, to the visible areas um, when you are displaying it. Now, once you've got this, if you still notice that your color isn't there and it's fully dry, then you can go back in and add another wash to your leather. And in this case, either the bottom or the top. In my case, I noticed that my highlights took away from the bottom. And I went ahead and added not only to the top, but I wanted to add some color back in and just wanted to have that thick or that rich leather look to uh, the paint surface that I'm working on. So once you are finished applying your color wash and your details, just go back through and review what spots you may have missed and then go back in and touch those up. And by the way, this uh, next little clip gives us an idea of our finished product and what it looks like on a true camera, not a cell phone camera. This is where we want to end up at. And just remember that we're only focusing on the helmet. The rest of the artwork on the figure is in another video. So I went back in myself and I still added more color to the bottom because I wanted to have a contrast of leather on the helmet. And I just wanted to have uh, a more, um, I should say, uh, color uh, focus uh, on the helmet is, uh, once I apply it on the figure. Again, this is going to be depending on what your taste is. You can go with the white, you can go with the red, a purple, a green, whatever tone of leather you want to have. Once you achieve the tones that you want, uh, you can go back in and bring back out some of those details that you may have erased by adding that second wash. And of course, once you've achieved that, a clear coat is a must. You want to clear coat every single time that you work on your figure so that if you do make a mistake, you can actually clean it off or uh, it just makes it easier not to have to start over and repaint the whole piece. So of course, a clear coat then just protects it so you can handle the piece that much easier. Make sure you blow dry it. Make sure it's fully dry before continuing to work on the piece after you have clear coated it. In this case, this is uh, looking pretty good so far. I really, really like the way the leather looks on this. Our next step now is to repaint some of those metal portions. Again, I'm not buying any special paint. I am mixing my own. I've got a few drops of actual silver paint and I'm gonna mix it in with black. And the black will give us now a metallic black. It's gonna look like an older metal. It's uh, a little bit of white to lighten just a bit. Again, we're not buying any special paints. It's These are the acrylic testers paints. These are not the craft paints. So a little bit higher quality. And you're taking a nice fine tip brush and just going over slowly and carefully, staying within the lines of the sculpture only on the metal surfaces. And that black line that's at the bottom from the previous paint, I'm going to leave that because that gives it some more depth. I just want to paint in the areas and clean up the areas that I may have covered up with the base brown. And you want to do this not only to the bottom, to whatever other metal areas that you have on the helmet. That's going to depend on, again, 
what your taste is for what the metal should look like. In this case, I'm trying to go with that Apes, uh, Planet of the Apes series. So the metals that they used in a lot of those photographs or the uh, TV series were very dark. They were not shiny chrome or uh, metallic surfaces that were so reflective. They were just uh, a very dark matte finish in many times. So I applied it again to the top of the helmet. I didn't apply it to the center because that's what I want to paint as a red star to match up with the other helmet. That way I can actually, you know, pretend that I can swap helmets on the two different figures. And later we'll make a comparison with the two on the next video that it focuses on the actual armor itself. So here I'm applying it with that same detail brush to be able to get to the edges and only to the metal surface. once again before continuing um, I've already clear coated it and taken a blow dryer to it but if you notice there are some tiny little rivets that we need to paint in to actually make it look that much more real so you take a nice detailed brush and a pair of uh, magnifying uh, goggles and you get in tight now I've got this zoomed in into the camera and I'm trying to use the camera and the goggles to show you how to paint this so I'm off on a few of these but these are incredibly difficult to paint if you have bad eyesight or if you're just trying to uh, brave it you can use the viewfinder on your camera to paint these in this case you're I'm using my phone uh, but I typically do not I use the goggles to get in as close as possible and then if I do over paint on some of these then I'll just go back in and take my base paint and cover up those little blemishes. I did the rivets on the bottom as well too, but it was just too difficult to show you on the camera. Now this is a little teaser of what we have coming up. Um, here's the helmet. This is where we're headed to. And again, we're, we'll cover the rest of the figure in another video. Now I finished the rivets on the edges and those were really difficult if I had not used those goggles. Now the helmet looks that much better. Uh, the rivets really make that leather pop. And then we're just going to add a few details of uh, scuff marks onto the metal. Those are the tiny little details we'll, that will make the difference in the finished product. And again, that's going to be up to you. How much detail do you want to actually highlight into the piece? The more details you have, the more time you uh, end up spending on the piece, and thereby creating a more dynamic piece. Or if you want to just keep it as simple as possible, and it's simplified. It's all up to you.
And there you have it. It's pretty much almost done. I've already uh, thrown a clear coat on it again. And I've added a few tiny highlights to the metal. Now it's time to uh, paint that red star. It's uh, pretty much our final step. So taking back a, another clean, fine detail brush and then our testers red acrylic paint. And this is a, uh, a shiny paint. It's not a matte finish. And you just work that brush into those grooves that are going to contain the red paint for the star. It's not a race, so take your time. If you got to use those magnifying goggles to get in there like I do, uh, then by all means, if you go over the edges onto the silver, no worries. Just remix a few drops of silver and black and repaint those spots. Um, there's no reason to be perfect on these. Just get as close as possible. And then just review your work, turn it around uh, 360 and upside down and sideways, whatever, until you are able to view the clean um, product. And if you can't see a clean product, then go back in and clean up those spots that uh, are actually distracting. In my case, um, it happened a lot. So it takes me a while to go back in and clean it up. So try to do the best you can, go slow, and that way you can actually see the work progress. Do not rush it. The more you spend time on it, the better product you will end up with. So this is it. We reached the end of our video. We are finished with the leather uh, applications to the metal helmet of Grot. It looks really, really cool. Make sure you clear coat it, you blow dry it, make sure it's ready to be handled. Once it's done, you're going to end up with a really awesome piece. Now I'm going to leave you with some before and afters. Uh, because a lot of you want to see those. I put it on back white background because somebody suggested. I prefer color backgrounds. And the only reason I did that is because a lot of you want to see comparison shots. Now a lot of the segments you'll see at the very end are little teasers as to what the next video is going to be about. And I'm going to focus more on the armor, not the helmet. I hope you like the video. If you do, make sure you uh, review it, share it. And of course, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and do so. The button is there. There's a lot more videos like this coming up. And again, remember, all my new format is to show you the finished product first and how we got to that finished product, ending up with some showcase images and some comparisons. Enjoy your action figure collecting. We'll see you next time.